Yes, indeed, there are more questions than answers. Like if there was an award for laziness, I would actually get someone else to pick it up for me. I was told at school I was lazy, but I was bored most of the time. I don't think they stretched me cerebrally in a 1980s East London comprehensive school. Did you like school, Michelle? I did. What was your favourite subject? English. What did you hate? What could you not bear to do at school? Math. You didn't like math. It's very interesting. People are either good at maths and like maths <laughs> or good at English and like English. You're not getting many people in between. Miss Morris, did you like school? Nope. <laughs> what was your favourite subject? Art. Art. Being creative. What could you not bear? Everything else. <laughs> I, used to, I must admit I dislike maths immensely as well. If they could have taught that more boringly, I doubt they would have found it to be perfectly honest my name is adrian lee and i am your host welcome to the show more questions than answers the only paranormal quiz show anywhere in the world i actually hated studying i hate studying but i really like learning yep. learning is fabulous studying not so much you see there's a very subtle difference and this show is all about learning you will leave this show i guarantee you with more than you arrived with the laziest person in the world has to be the guy that invented the Japanese flag. <laughs> Can you imagine the brief? We want a nice flag. It's got to represent the country of Japan. And he sit there with his coffee and he lifts his coffee up and there's a circle on the paper and he puts that in. Ask for the money. Well, I call, unfortunately, amoebic dysentery when I was in living in India many, many years ago. And every time I look at the Japanese flag, I think of what my bottom used to look like. 100% Ooh, true. <laughs> Each week, my guests and I will search the world's newspapers, websites, and TV shows just for you to bring you the very best in paranormal talk radio entertainment and enlightenment. We will then test each other's knowledge of the week's events of the mysterious. Never gets boring, does it? Nope. Always love that. <laughs> Brings me lots of happiness and joy. Strange, supernatural, unusual, bizarre. <gasps> And just plain weird. If you have just tuned in especially to hear the show, then I admire your taste. If you have just tuned in by accident, then I admire your luck. I am huddled under my quilt with a large flashlight and a nice cup of tea with tonight's guests. Somewhere in the barren wildernesses of the Midwest Plains, with the sound of my elderly mother snoring distantly from the room next door. Each week... We press our ear against the bedroom wall. Whatever my mother listens to picks and pulls on her unconscious mind. And that's the very tune she snores. Let's have a listen tonight. I got you, babe. <laughs> uh, sure. I've got you to hold me tight. If I could turn back time. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> You're all laughing. That's Heather Morrissey's karaoke songs right there. Mm. The only time you'd get up to karaoke, wouldn't it, would be... To sing Cher. A little bit of a Cher. Have you got a favourite? No. No. Wow. Cher's greatest hits. Four-track EP, I'm led to believe. Nice. Wow. So snuggle under your covers, turn out your lights, and hold on tight. The rules are very simple. Points will be awarded randomly for being interesting or for making me laugh or shiver in heart horror extra points will be available for shock and or value to help me control my rowdy panel of recidivists and reprobates i will employ what i have called the inappropriate bell an example of this would be already used it once tonight yep warmed it up i have 
The panel have no idea what's coming. I have no idea what stories they have for tonight's show, so let me introduce my guests. Firstly, the mysterious and effervescent Heather Morris. She's been a paranormal investigator for many years with her own team called Hellhound Investigations and does all of her best work in the shadows. She is now one of the leading audio and EVP experts with the International Paranormal Society and brings her knowledge and research skills to tonight's show. She's also a producer and sound engineer. Heather is a perfectionist and a procrastinator, so someday she will be awesome. Welcome to the show, Heather. <laughs> Hello. Heather has great jokes about procrastination, and if you stay with us next week, she'll tell us them then. Ew. I also wish to introduce the man crazy, Michelle Corey. She was born and raised in Mora, Minnesota, and has a keen and avid interest into all things paranormal. Michelle read this week that the inventor of the snooze button passed away. His funeral will be at 8 o'clock, 8.09, 8.18, <laughs> And 8.27, if anybody's interested in going along. Welcome to the show, Michelle. Thank you. Do you like using your snooze alarm? Yes. Do you really? Mm -hmm. How many times do you hit that sucker before, you know, you get up? Is it three, four? What do you get into? A lot, but I also set my stove timer. Oh, no. <laughs> so you have to get up. So in your house, everything's just going off. Yep. So when you're fully baked, that's when you get up? <laughs> With my schedule, yes. <laughs> Do you like using snooze alarms? No. I can't bear them. I think they're awful. If you're going to press a snooze alarm six or seven times in a row, I'd rather have an extra hour of quality sleep than six or seven, you know, interrupted moments. It's I just, know. just awful. I, don't, I hate them. I've never used them. I'd rather just have quality sleep until the alarm goes off and then get up rather than having interrupted sleep for the last hour <laughs> of my sleep cycle. Wow. I hate it when you wake up a minute before your alarm goes off, and that was the last minute you needed to make it through the day. <laughs> you never get it back, do you? You're always no. playing catch-up at no, that No, you never point. get it back. They're mad, they're bad, and they are paranormal. This is Series 4, Episode 28, our 301st episode. Ew. We still have the balloons inflated behind us. There's still stale Christmas cake on the table. There's empty bottles of wine all around the studio because last week, where were you? Our 300th oh. episode. If you wish to catch up with the 300th episode, and it was a particularly good one, you can go to YouTube, search for more questions and answers with Adrian Lee, and you will find that on there for you with all our other episodes. But I recommend you get a chance to catch up with that. We had a lot of fun. We did. It's a lot of effort after reaching the 300th milestone to then get out of bed and then do 301, 302. What's our next target? <laughs> you know, where's our, where's our next goal? That's the problem we've got. I will mention before we jump into the quiz proper that we have a watch party currently taking place live at this very moment. If you go to Facebook, if you search for more questions and answers with Adrian Lee, you will find a quiz currently taking place live on there people answering the questions i'm about to deliver people having fun exchanging jokes probably exchanging telephone numbers as well i wouldn't add i hope so yeah i think that's all happening on, on there if you wish to have some fun and frivolity if you wish to interact with the show live you can do that now at this very minute if you jump in on facebook and we have many people playing along five six hundred comments every show thank you for playing along thank you for supporting us why not share those things on your social media site. So as convention dictates, the I've got you, babe, Martin-sponsored gong of infinite knowledge with the put your little hand in mind of statistics and the just like Jesse James of facts. Martin! You, you can tell I'm a fan, you, can't you? Wow. This week saw the groundhog. Yep. Pucks the tawny. That's a great. That's a winning word in Scrabble. Is that if you need to get rid of an X and a W and a Y, that's a winning word in Scrabble. Puxatawney Phil declared that we're going to have another six weeks of winter. Little turd. We were discussing in the studio before the show that right now in Minnesota, we would take another six weeks of yeah, winter. Yeah, if it was over in six weeks, I'm down. Yes, because I think we've probably got another twenty looming. Yeah. I've seen snowstorms in May and June oh, yeah. in this state. If you said to me now, there's another six weeks of winter, 
I would rip your hand off, shaking your hand to make that yep. deal is what's going to happen. So for the first time in the history of MQTA Radio, I cannot believe that strange, bizarre and fascinating facts about the 1993 film Groundhog oh boy. Day. I love that film. I remember in 93 actually going to the cinema, watching that film. I had, had no clue what it was about. In Britain, we have no understanding of the groundhog or what all that is. Why would we? We have no clue about what's going on. And I walked out of that cinema. I actually remember walking out of the cinema with my friend Chris. And I remember turning around to him and saying, do you know what? That was one of the best films I've seen. That was really good. <laughs> to me completely by surprise great fan of Groundhog Day. I've been watching it all week, as you would expect, <laughs> over and over. I have. They're running it back to back on one of the channels. Feeling confident fan of Groundhog Day? No. I mean, yes. No. You've no idea, have you? What? You like Bill Murray. Yes. Harold Ramis, of course, was the director. Yes. They never spoke to each other after that until Harold Ramis was on his deathbed 20 years later and they buried the hatchet. But they did have a lot of fallings out on that film. And they never spoke to each other oh. after that moment, which is very disappointing. What did Bill Murray do to the extras and the residents of the town that were looking on in the town square during the filming of Groundhog Day? That's all you've got to answer to get your slippery points this evening. He mooned them. So the whole town has turned out, because obviously it wasn't a set, it's an actual place. It's uh, Woodstock in Illinois. So the whole town's there. They're watching the filming. And I think some of the filming was done in June and May. Uh -huh. So they had to wear coats even though it was roasting hot and they made it look snowy. So you're suggesting in front of the whole town, Bill Murray pulled his pants down and presented a Mooney to the entire town. Do you think that would go down well? Yes. Wow. <laughs> look at that man smoking a cigar. Stop. Ooh. Oh, my so you're suggesting Bill Murray pulled a Mooney to the entire town and all the extras? Yep. What do you think, Michelle? What would Bill Murray have done? I think maybe he took them all out for dinner. Oh, oh, I say. Keep or, going. Go on. Or? Gave him ice cream. Well, you're, you're getting dangerously close to the right Popcorn. answer. Because you know what an absolute star and philanthropist yeah. Bill Murray is. Christmas presents. So they've been standing there all day, probably... A little bit weary, perhaps a hungry. What would he have done, do you think? Popcorn. Catered their dinner. Uh, I'm going to give you the points, Michelle. I think you're as good as oh. close enough <laughs> to the answer. He actually went. They looked hungry. The guy that played Ned Ryerson, the actor, do you remember he tries to sell him insurance? Ned Ryerson. <laughs> the actor that played Ned Ryerson actually went to Bill Murray and said all the extras and the residents are looking very hungry. And he went to the local bakery, purchased every single pastry they had, oh. and then threw them into the crowd, oh. <laughs> creating a riot, I suspect. There'd be a stampede in some parts of the world yes. for a free Danish pastry tossed into the crowd. I'm imagining things like sea lions now catching fish. <laughs> oh, I thought I'd boy. share that with you. I have serious concerns about anyone who doesn't like Danish pastries. Have you ever met anyone? What's wrong with you people if you don't like those? But Michelle has won herself a nice couple of pastry buttery laden points this evening how many times did the groundhog bite bill murray oh. during the filming of groundhog day nearest one will win so 13. someone is taking them away heather has gone with a rather controversial and unlucky for some maybe lucky for miss morris we'll have to wait and see how many times was bill murray bitten by the groundhog during groundhog day five you are going five, and you'd be right to go five. He was bitten only three times, oh. but that's given you a nice couple of points. The incisors clamping onto your fleshies has given you some points up to five. I'll give you three points for that, because I'm feeling very generous. My favorite film. I'm very happy. Everything's going great. Remember, the groundhog is a rodent, not a meteorologist. <laughs> Just saying. In 2009, Harold Ramis was asked how many years... He thought Bill Murray's character was trapped in the same day for. What was his answer? 13. <laughs> <laughs> now, somewhere in the collective consciousness of the universe, you've managed to pull out of the ether 
the double integer of 13 and you're going to stick with that now through thick and thin aren't you why 13 because I said it before. Oh. And it was wrong, so you decided to go with it again? Because it'll be right. What's the saying that if you do the same thing over and over again and expect a, a different, different outcome, outcome, that but, you're a genius? Yeah. So you are suggesting that when Harold Ramis was asked how many years he thought Bill Murray's character was trapped in the same day, you are presenting to me 13. Yes. He had 13 years there. Yep. Michelle, you have many numbers to choose from. From zero to infinity. 30. You are going with mm -hmm. 30. You are 100% correct. <laughs> it is 30. Well, he actually said 30 to 40. So I would have given you any number in between there. But that is the actual correct answer. You're doing very well, Thank aren't you? Thank you. You was a bit unsure that you'd I get was, anything right. Yeah. But you are now up to a very, very strong, lucky for some, seven. Unfortunately, Ooh. 13 was unlucky for Miss Morris on this occasion. In the original script, and I would have given you this as well, but in the original script, it was noted that Murray's character was locked in the same day, are you ready for this, for 10,000 years. That was the original script, 10,000 years. And he marked the time going by by going into the library every single day and just reading one page oh. at a time until he'd read every single library book in that library and that was how we managed to keep track of how much time was passing god can you imagine ten thousand years that's how he knew so much and all the things that were taking place at the end he knows everyone's name he knows all their personal business doesn't he everything that's going on murray refused to do the implied sex scene with andy mcdowell on february the third which was the evening he finally breaks three of February the 2nd. If you remember, they're in bed at the end. But Murray refused to do the implied sex scene with Andy McDowell on February the 3rd unless he what? Now, unless he what? This was something um. he had to put in place. Otherwise, he wouldn't have done it. And they actually had a vote on this. They voted on this. The crew, all of the people involved... Got to shave. Got to shave what? His beard. Uh, his beard? I didn't realise he had a beard. You well, mean his five o'clock shadow? His yes. His stubble? Yes. Do you have the term five o'clock shadow over there? Is that an Americanism? Do you yes. Are you aware of that? Okay. Just checking. Some things you look at me very oddly, like you've never heard them before. Like what you're wearing now? Like soap and water. <gasps> oh, yeah. evil. There yeah. So you are suggesting he wanted to shave. They said to him, no shaving. Yes. Was he worried that Andy McDowell might get a shaving rash? Razor burn. Might Ooh. get a bit of redness there on her face. Michelle, what did he want to do? What did he say? I'm not doing this scene unless. There. I get a haircut. Get a haircut. Wow. I will have to tell you this. He suggested, he said he wasn't going to do any scene with Andy McDowell in bed unless he was wearing his pyjamas. He didn't want to be seen. You don't see anything, of course, but under the sheets, you'd have seen him naked. And he wanted to wear pyjamas, and they weren't sure whether this was a good idea or not. And they did a vote on it, and it came out exactly 50-50. Oh, God. And Ramis got the deciding vote, and he decided, okay, keep your pyjamas on. And if you remember the film, he's got like a collarless pyjama top with blue oh. stripes. Remember, pyjamas are something you put under your pillow in case of a fire. Yeah. See, I told you, you would leave this show with more than you arrived with. I'm not making it up. There is a plaque now in Woodstock, Illinois, where the filming took place to commemorate what? Miss Morris. They have a plaque. I will read you what's on the plaque once you've given me your answer. But there is a plaque in the town, and I'd yes. like you to tell me what the plaque is commemorating. Punxsutawney Phil, and well, where they held him up at. So the exact the moment town hall meeting they place. knocked on the door with the cane, pulled him yeah. out, raised him up, yeah. opened up the scroll, announced to everyone there is a plaque there saying Groundhog Day Punxsutawney Phil. happened here at this moment yep. next to the bandstand. Wow. What are you going to go with, Michelle? There is a plaque. You're going to have to think about what happened in the film and what they might want to commemorate in that town square. 
and I'll give it back to Morris so she can have a think about it while you're letting the cogs go around maybe a squirt of WD-40 in each year just to help things along you can't remember anything no, about this I film can't. can you no. see I've been watching it all week so I have the advantage should have watched it you should have watched known. it you can't remember a scene something that happened in the town square during the filming of that show no back to Morris anything you'd like to add Mm, where the car wreck was. Wow. Where they changed the tire. Well, you're getting the right idea. There's quite a lot goes on in the town square. They have ice sculptures. Ned Ryerson gets punched in the face. Do you recall that he stepped in a puddle? They have a plaque next to the road. They actually had to remove some bricks to make the hole. And the plaque is next to the hole and it says Bill Murray stepped here. Oh, my word. That's God. great. This is 100% true. We should go there. I we want should. to do an MQTA show. Illinois is not a million miles away, is no. it? We could get there in half a day. I think we should make that happen. A puddle, of course, is a snowman on a spring break. Yes. Very philosophical. How many times did the groundhog bite Bill Murray during the filming of Groundhog Day? Heather. Three. What are you going to go with, Michelle? Three. I love <laughs> this show. I love this show. <laughs> This makes me Good happy. God. Existentialist <laughs> jokes. This is a joy. I'm just going to wait. Like, wait a minute. I, I'm literally going to finish there. You can the other, you know, 40 minutes. We'll just yeah. sit here. You know, you can go and make a cup of tea. I mean, we can't do any better than that, can we? Everything is literally downhill from this point on. This makes me very happy. I just thought you were getting really old. <laughs> yes, I normally miss up my worms on a regular basis considering it's our 301st show i think right. i've only once messed up a question okay fair <laughs> enough <laughs> today we celebrate the 126th birthday of baseball legend babe ruth born in 1895 and passing in 19 19- 48. So for the very first time in the history of MQTA Radio, I cannot believe that strange, bizarre and fascinating facts about Babe Ruth. Are you a fan of baseball? Yes. Excellent. That surprised me. I'm surprised to hear that. Have you been to games? Yeah. Have you watched games? Sure. People say to me as a paranormal investigator, I don't believe in ghosts. And I say I spend every weekend in the most haunted buildings all over the world and I've seen some incredible things. And then I say to them, well, you need to be in a haunted building the chance of seeing a ghost just randomly as you're walking around the grocery store is very thin but if you put yourself in the right place at the right time the chances are you will see one so there's no use just dismissing it and saying it doesn't exist i then respond by saying i've never been to a baseball game (laughs) but it doesn't mean they don't exist weekend the chances will be high that something will happen and i will see a baseball game why did babe ruth go to jail in 1921 think of something think of an illegality something he may have gone to jail for he was quite the recidivist so you have a choice of things to choose from but he did go to jail in 1921 to win your points miss morris fan of baseball no i like sport I'm a big fan of cricket. I used to play cricket for my university. I had a batting average of 42. I was the wicketkeeper, the guy that stands there with the gloves and catches the ball. I can't get into baseball. I watch. I love sport. I've tried. I have really tried. I have nothing against it. I want to learn. I want to watch. I mean, I know the rules and what you're supposed to do. Several years ago, probably three or four years ago now, a friend of mine was a supporter of the Chicago Cubs. Back to Bill Murray again. Do you remember his shirt which said, I'm, I ain't afraid of no goat? <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. The guy's a legend, isn't he? And I got talked into watching one of the games in the World Series for when the Cubs won. It was the first time in like 4,000 yeah. years or something. So I did watch. I thought, okay, I'll give it another go. I'll watch. I sat there for five or six hours. The ball during that six hours was hit twice. <gasps> and on both occasions, it went behind. And that was it. It was a lot of spitting, scratching yourself. I didn't. I actually think, like cricket in many respects, it exists, cricket, so you can have a picnic. Yeah. 
it's about eating peanuts, hot dogs, drinking beer. I mean, is is anyone paying attention to that stuff? What? Exactly. <laughs> so you've had time to think, Maurice. Yeah. He went to jail in 1921. What did he do? He was smoking in the stadium while he was batting. He was smoking while batting. I can actually imagine that happening. Back in the day, I'm sure they advertised cigarettes. Smoke oh. up. They're good for you. Yeah. You'll get the woman. They'll unblock your nasal passages. You'll be a hero. Smoke up, granddad. They're good for you. So smoking in the stadium. In the stadium and while he was batting. A big old stogie. Well, that's slightly different from a cigarette. <laughs> What are you thinking of, Corey? What did he go to jail for? Oh, I think maybe he was drunk and disorderly. Drunk and disorganized. He'd actually lost his diary on the way to the stadium, having drunk a beer. He was only in jail for a day, and they had to rush him out, and there was a police escort, and he was on the back of a motorbike to get to the stadium in time. But he had amassed so many speeding tickets, <gasps> so many traffic oh. violations, and there were so many automobile accidents. The guy was a menace behind the wheel of his car let me put that out there he was jailed for a day and uh, the final thing the thing that broke the dam was he was doing 26 mile an hour oh my when i was in britain they have speed cameras on every single street see if i went from where i lived three blocks away i could be caught on film half a dozen times and that would be enough to then lose your license because one camera would go off then another one then another one on another street and if you were only going three or four miles over the speed limit, by the time you got to where you were, you'd have so many points amassed, you would then lose your license. Right. I got close. I got to nine points when I was a teacher back in Britain. And if you get to 12 points, you lose your license. But every time I got caught, I was only doing three or four miles over the limit. So if you add it all together, I was close to losing my license. Combined total is 12 miles an hour over the speed <laughs> limit. No. There's people out there breaking the law. You should be after them. Yeah. This is how Britain makes all of its money. But yes, in fact, true, he was in jail. For the day, there's no points to have. The city of Minneapolis is no longer giving away speed t speeding tickets. Did you hear that? Instead, to deter speeders, they're giving away Vikings tickets. It's topical. <sighs> A little bit of satire there, ladies and gentlemen. Babe Ruth's father died in 1918. I just need you to tell me. How? How did Babe Ruth's father die in 1918? Choking on a hot dog. He choked on a hot dog. The lesson there is to chew your food properly, ladies and gentlemen. Drinking yes. the hot dog water. What are you thinking, Michelle? Car accident. <laughs> Babe Ruth hit him in a car. <laughs> yeah. Hit by a baseball. <laughs> yeah. I will tell baseball you that there's bat. some really <laughs> strange things happened to Babe Ruth in his life, and I'll get to those in a moment. Let me tell you you're both wrong. So let's just go through a list of different ways people can die, and whoever gets there first wins their points. Go. Washing dishes, mowing the lawn. He died washing dishes. How do you he die washing dishes? Fell off a building site. Keep Slipped going. on the ice. Mm. He yeah. Mm. Yeah. fell in a hole. A horse. Sinkhole. He did what with a horse? <laughs> Kicked by a horse. He died in a bar fight. Oh. He hit his head on the sidewalk, back of his head, fractured his skull and died in a bar fight. What's was it icy? I don't know. Do I so. win? <laughs> was it icy? It's a bit of, was there a horse? Was it winter? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he had a bar fight with a horse. <laughs> you looking at me? So what's with the long face? That's terrible. A horse walks into a bar and the bartender confuses his idioms and his jokes together, offers the horse a glass of water, but he can't make him drink it. <laughs> <coughs> oh this my. is just fantastic. Mm -mm. Yes, his father died, unfortunately, in a bar fight. His oh. wife, he was divorced from his wife, Babe Ruth, and his wife died in a house fire, and they thought that she was somebody else. And they only realized she had died when some friends many years later saw her photograph in a newspaper. There was some really odd. I'm not blaming Babe Ruth for no. any of this, but there was some strange and odd things happened in that man's life and around that man's life. Very, very odd. Very strange. Cannot give the points away. Michelle's on seven and we are yet to score. I love that joke. <laughs> Do you remember Stan and Ollie? Yes. Laurel and Hardy. One of the most fantastic scenes I like the show. Do you remember they did an episode called The Babysitters where they played themselves as children and they had yes, to babysit yes. them? Yes, There's a fantastic moment where Stan and 
Ollie are playing pool downstairs and Stan's eating marshmallows and he puts a marshmallow on the pool table and and uh, he picks Oliver picks it up and he's chalking his cue oh. and it's sticky it's all sticky and then Stan's chewing away you know he's, he's eating the chalk but the reason I bring this up is that Stan says to him you can lead a horse to water but you can't I have no clue what but I'm, you can't what but you can't you can lead a horse to water but a pencil must be led Oh. This is true. That was then, but this is now as we enter our favourite part of the show. It's the mailbag. Yay! The mailbag. Love the mailbag. the mailbag. We love the mailbag. If you wish to send us letters, if you wish to send us notes and tell us the things you like about the show or the things you don't like, anything at all, if you wish to ask us questions, we will answer them on air. You can go to my Facebook site, More Questions and Answers, with Adrian Lee. We had so many comments last week on our war about our 300th episode. We'd spend an hour going through all those so if you sent us a congratulation message if you said well done we really appreciate that thank you for spending the time doing that for us we did yeah. read every single one of them i think i put a thumbs up to to say that we'd seen those but thank you for that don has written he wants to know after 300 shows why are heather and michelle still referred to as guests because we're not paid do you want to answer that because i could get fired at any moment because <laughs> i don't get any money i think originally when we first started this show we did have guests on we've had bob gilbert the author from washington antonia felix the uh new york best-selling author who lives in farmington in minnesota we've had lots and lots of guests brian sterling vitae of course the uh film actor from star trek and various other places bbc journalists we did have many guests on but unfortunately, with COVID and everything we've got, and we're in the middle of nowhere here, by yeah. the way. Let's put that out there. We're literally in the barren wildernesses of the Midwest Plains. We couldn't get guests here, even if we what tried. What are you trying to say? So, you're my guests. <laughs> you live locally. You're, you know, this is you're in the same town, which is beneficial, right? Yes. You can walk home. But that's your answer, sir. It's uh, we did have more guests in the past. And they're not being paid, and it's my show, so you're whatever I tell you are. You're my guest, okay. and I appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thank you for yeah. being here and answering the questions incredibly well. Samantha has posted, I hate listening to the show because for the next few days, I think in a British accent. <laughs> so obviously that's raising your IQ, I would suggest, Ooh. thinking in a British accent. Not constantly, she puts, not all of the time. That would be ridiculous, wouldn't it? But words like Tuesday... Like you're chewing a sweet Tuesday and in it. Oh. I've never said in it in my life. Where's she getting this from? An episode of EastEnders. It's not in Downton Abbey. I can tell you that straight <laughs> off the bat. Deanna has posted congratulations on 300 shows. This show is the best gift to your fans. Adrian's hard work does not go unnoticed. And all of you do a wonderful job. Mm. Thank you for the best hour of my weekend oh, thank, thank you. you this is what comes if you live in this part of the world that it is the best hour of your weekend yes miss morris would you like to discuss our patreon site and some of the exciting news we may have coming in the very near future well if you're up for it join our patreon at mqta radio or i believe it's under more questions and answers with adrian lee and we have a big surprise coming up in february where we will be doing Ghost Hunting 101. Ooh. And there's nine episodes coming. They're all audio, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on whether <laughs> you I think based on how we're looking tonight, probably fortunately. Yeah. Yeah. That you will be able to access, and you'll only be able to get that if you're on Patreon. Yes, we have many fantastic things coming for all of our Patreon supporters. We appreciate every single one of you. So thank you for going on to there for us this show runs on our 301st episode basically on voluntary donations so thank you for that if you go there there's lots of other wonderful things as well it's a single dollar for one dollar an episode yeah you can't even buy a snickers bar for that no. we're currently on mcn 6 9 p.m central time every saturday night if you go to mcn6.org you can stream that on every single device anywhere in the world your laptop your television your ipad your cell phone you can find us on there you can find us on roku on mcn6 if you search 
for that we have many platforms all our shows are archived going back in the last seven or eight years you can find the audio for this show if you wish to listen in the car or perhaps walking the dog or in the gym if you go to soundcloud search for mqta radio but we're on itunes stitcher TuneIn, spotify so many more i can't read them all out if you can't find us you've only got yourself to blame and if you go to youtube you can actually find all of the television shows we've done on mcn6 in the last four to five months you can watch us as well and we're on digistream global Dot com. Everything's on there for you. I also want to mention that I've done some fantastic work with two great ghost hunters from Texas. If you go to YouTube, search for the Paranormal Files. I actually did two or three episodes in haunted buildings in Minnesota, and I recommend if you get a chance to see those, some crazy things happened. Miss Morris, what do we do every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Central Time? Drink a lot of alcohol. Yeah. You do. I just have a cup of tea. That's all I have. <laughs> We all get together, we turn our TVs over to the History Channel, and typically we watch The Curse of Oak Island with a nice big drink in our hand. It has been a curse bored. over the last seven years, I will Boring. say. The show's not the best show in the world, but we have a watch party, and lots of people join in, and it's so funny. It is. I laugh out loud watching all the jokes, all the gifts. It's huge entertainment. If you've got nothing to do... On a Tuesday at 8 p.m. Central Time, find us on Facebook. There's a watch party. We watch The Curse of Oak Island, and we are cracking jokes and having so much fun. It's just a joy to be alive. What possible better entertainment could you have during a, a COVID Tuesday. on a Tuesday right. during a COVID pandemic in the winter? Yeah, no one's having more fun than us. No, you can find us on there, of course. We now enter the. <sighs> First round proper with ghosts and hauntings. Remember, we don't do orbs. We have signs up that say such wonders. A haunting TikTok video captured the moment a ghostly figure walked outside a house where a man took his own life. As a man lifted a heavy sack from the back of a pickup truck, a hooded figure appeared from behind the vehicle. So every teenage boy there's ever been then, I would suggest. Mm. Roberto Morales from San Diego, California, shared the snap on the video app with the caption, my brother committed suicide in this house on 11-11-2020. Look in the front of the silver SUV. We believe this is his spirit roaming the house. He captioned the video with hashtag sad, scary, ghost and cry and added a crying emoji at the end. The hooded figure, only visible for a split second at the end of the clip, abruptly appears from behind the front of a car on the far right in another clip roberto shared what looks like a dark shadow through the windscreen on his sister's phone there are also screenshots of what looks like a face in the back of the window of his suv morales original video has been viewed nearly nine million times and has received more than forty-five thousand comments from terrified tiktok <gasps> users i've been on tiktok and that terrifies me yes dude Abandon that house immediately. You shouldn't be there. Spray holy water all over the place and have a blessed day. Another TikTok user has posted, I claim no negative energy. And another wrote, Lord, protect me from this post. Inside the house, Roberto posted another video of a face-like shape in the mirror of his brother's bedroom. He took the video three days after his beloved brother passed away. One viewer offered Roberto some advice. Dude, Abandon that house immediately. You should not be there. You should not be there, or I don't care. Go to our Facebook site, More Questions and Answers, with Adrian Lee, and you can see the videos and the photographs for yourself. I'm surprised I didn't get interrupted during the course mm -hmm. of that story. Anything you'd like to add? Other than it's bunk. <laughs> if you are playing the Bell Bunk and Snort drinking game, you are now welcome to take a shot wherever you are. In the world, pros salute. Cheers. May I also say yes. that if that's supposed to be his brother that committed suicide that's haunting them, why would it be scary? Yeah. That is also true. Just a question. Yes, his brother wouldn't want to hurt him, would he? No. It's the fear of the unknown. That's Ugh. exactly what that is. I saw the ghost of my great-grandmother wandering around my bedroom when I was a small boy. And I went to my parents the following morning and said, there's an old woman walking around my bedroom and my parents are both scientists 
My mother worked as a biochemist. My dad worked in a physics lab in Queen Mary and Westfield College. And they said exactly what I would have expected two scientists to say, which was, if that's your great-grandmother, she wouldn't want to hurt you. Go back to bed, Adrian. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Miss Morris, yeah. what have you got for me tonight in the round of ghosts and hauntings? A ship carrying 20 passengers has disappeared without a trace despite an extensive search and rescue effort. There are a few mysteries as endearing and as well known as the Bermuda Triangle, an expanse of ocean in the North Atlantic that spans the area between Florida, Bermuda, and Puerto Rico. <gasps> so we have another ship that has gone missing Ooh. in the Bermuda Triangle. Bermuda Triangle. Try and see from my angle. What? Second rhymes for Barry Manilow. Uh, He's tried his best, poor man. Yeah. Over the years... By the way, I'm going to jump in there. Oh, boy. That's a really interesting kind of second rhyme, how he's tried to just crowbar that in. I will tell you the best line from any song where they've tried to crowbar in a rhyme. Have you heard of the group Madness? Yeah. Our house in the middle of our street. Welcome to the house of fun. It must be love, love, love. On their greatest hits, one of their albums, they have a song. I like driving in my car. Ding, ding, ding. Do you know that one? Mm-hmm. This is the line, I like driving in my car. I know it's not a Jaguar. <laughs> <laughs> there must be other things that rhyme with car, surely, other than Jaguar. I'm sorry, that just sprang to mind. I, How's you know, your ADD? Yeah. It's going great. Awesome. Thank you. I'll have some more jubes. I'll be mm. back after the break. <gasps> People did comment last week that my face went bright red like I got sunburned after I ate the jubes. Instant anaphylactic shock on television. Oh, good. Lucky we didn't need an EpiPen. Yeah, because we don't have one. Morris, I don't have one. Lucky we, lucky I didn't have that would have, Just use a normal pen. Keep jamming it into my thigh, seeing if that works. Over There's times I've sat through lectures in art history classes where I've had to clutch a rusty nail into the palm of my hand to stay conscious. Oh. That's a similar idea. It's just taking your mind off of it, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Miss Morris, what have you got for me? Are you sure? Yeah, you can yeah. go, girl. Yeah. All right. Over the years, the region has become synonymous with an unexplained disappearance of ships and airplanes, often with no trace of them or their crews ever being found. Now the same thing has happened again, and everyone on board is still missing. The vessel, which left Bimini in the Bahamas on December 28th on a trip to Lake Worth, Florida, was reported missing after it failed to turn up to its destination, prompting a major Coast Guard search. After covering a whopping 17,000 square miles over a period of 84 hours, however, rescuers were forced to suspend their search, having found no sign of the missing vessel wow. or people on board. Mm. Our thoughts and prayers go out to the families of the missing people. I encourage anyone with information about the people aboard to contact us as soon as possible. As things stand, though, the whereabouts of the boat and its crew continue to remain a total mystery. Wow. <gasps> mystery of the Bermuda Triangle, or try and see it from my angle. <laughs> Go to our Facebook site for questions and answers with Adrian Lee, and you can see the story for yourself. Dan Osborne gets a psychic to contact his nan on her birthday just after she passed away from coronavirus. As a psychic, I've always found it very difficult to access spirits just days, weeks, and months yeah. after they've passed. I get the impression they're still around, seeing how the family is. They don't instantly leave. Many spirits tell me that they've been to their own funeral and they've seen the people giving eulogies about them and what people are wearing and what they're talking about, which would suggest they stay around for at least a couple of weeks until the person's buried, right? Yeah. Just a couple of days after seems very odd for me. If people contact me and say adrian can you you know chat with my deceased relatives and i say well how long have they been deceased for i normally wait three or four months sure. i don't want to take their money off them and then sit there and say you know they're not in spirit at the moment you know in terms of somebody i can access they're still around you right has normally been the case but apparently he did contact his grandmother just days later through a psychic. The 29-year-old took to his Instagram story to reveal that the medium first gave a reading in his front garden. 
Father of Two, Dan explained that he'd delivered a prize, a bundle of Apple products, to spirit medium Mike Ho after he won a recent competition. I think that's a little odd, isn't it? Psychic wins competition. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if he walked to his mailbox three times that day to see if he'd won. <laughs> in between training in the gym, the former The Only Way as Essex star revealed the crazy coincidence and saw him contact his dead grandmother. As we know, there is no such thing as a coincidence. Strangely, it all occurred on what would have been his nan's birthday and just days after she passed from COVID-19 last week. How mad is this? Like the craziest coincidence... Or is it not a coincidence, Dan told his fans, taking to Instagram. On our draw last night, Mike won our Apple bundle and we delivered it to him today. And Mike happens to be a spirit medium out of everyone in the country, the TV personality continued. My nan passed away on Friday and it was her birthday today. And Mike picks up on my nan's spirit in his front garden and gave us a reading. There and then on the spot as they're handing him his prize. Who knew? These things that would only have been known to us, he was telling me. It was mind-blowing, like unbelievable. He went on to detail that the spirit medium offered to do a full reading on a conference call with the rest of Dan's family. As a nice gesture, he's done a Zoom call for my mother, cousin, aunt and uncle and my granddad, he explained, oh. all contacting the same person. Directly addressing the medium, he continued, you've really helped me. You've comforted everyone in my family. You've helped them so much. What's the chances out of everyone in the country that we met you today? Thank you so much. Psychic wins prize or where's the surprise? Go to our <laughs> Facebook site. More questions and answers with Adrian Lee. Michelle, what have you got for me tonight in the round of ghosts and hauntings? A woman was stunned to film the trapped ghost of an old woman trying to escape an 800 year old church dungeon 800 year old why is there a dungeon in a church that seems a place that's very odd isn't it in a church to have a dungeon because it's in ireland oh well they're, they're a bit odd over there. Right, fair enough say no more they Care. built it wrong they got the plans upside down and they were drunk when they were digging it out yep. i know exactly what happens Karen Furlong, 44, caught the spooky snap by chance at St. Mary's Church in New Ross in County Wexford over the weekend. It has made the front page of her local newspaper and Karen insists she is 100% certain she has a picture of a ghost. She told the Irish Daily Mirror, I was sitting at home Saturday night and I got up into the kitchen and noticed it was snowing. I ran out to the front and brought my phone with me because the church is just across the road from my house. She posted a few snaps of the church on Twitter and added, and I was just sitting up in bed when I looked at it and I went, hang on a second. That's creepy. Yeah. Was that your best Irish accent? No. Why aren't we hearing that? <laughs> <laughs> I want you to say that again. You've lived there. I You've know. got more chance than I've got. <laughs> I zoomed in and said, oh, my God, I think that's a ghost. Oh, my God. Oh, hey, it's a spirit. And I just took off from there. Have now, you been reading the same book on how to do accents as Miss Morris? Yes. She's got an entire <laughs> range of accents from A through to B. It's remarkable. Now, to me, I originally thought that it was a monk. But the more I look at it, I can see the despair in a figure's face. And I thought that it might be a woman. Karen, who described herself as a shamanic master, oh, shamanic boy. Shamanic. Yeah, there's a few of them around, aren't they? Self-proclaimed is yeah. always mm -hmm. a preface that makes me cringe. Self-proclaimed yes. shamanic master. Okay, so you've read a couple of books and watched yeah. a YouTube video. I see how this works. I'm a self-proclaimed yes. genius. And then you, <laughs> yes, yes, and then you hang a hang a turtle a shell plaque. around your neck. <laughs> And wear some strange bones and put a few crystals in your pocket. She said, we've always been told there's there's stories that there's dungeons over there in that church. And there's a tunnel that leads the whole way underneath the church and under the river barrow. To me, I think it might be an old woman with something around her shoulders. Another medium said he or she, and I think I said that it was a she can't go further than that wall she's trapped there she can't go further than that wall it's caught there you know i love the accent by the way i thought they said it looked like a monk and then they address <laughs> it as a she yeah she monk a she monk 
That's a schmunk. In the dungeon of the church. That sounds like a load of schmunk to me. <laughs> well, surely a she-monk would be a nun, wouldn't it, at that point? We need a picture of a she-monk because the picture has been viewed tens of thousands of times. Wow. It's me trying to escape the church. Yeah. And featured on the front 800 page years of ago. the new Ross What are you, standard. in the film Highlander? Yes. Mm. That's ridiculous. Scary Haunted Monk or... That's it just might bunk. Be bunk. <laughs> We've been doing this show for too many years. Three, oh, one. <laughs> Fantastic overusage of the bunk bell as I live and breathe. Peaky Blinders is set by a haunted ghost. Do you know Peaky Blinders? I watched it. It is a British TV show set back in the Victorian period amongst all of the working classes. Have you ever seen Peaky Blinders? I think Half it refers hour. to the little flat caps they wear that have like a, a a razor blade on them, and they, you know, can attack you with their hat. Like they can blind you with the, with the peak of their flat cap because they put a blade in there. You look like you're lost. I just no, trying it's to, true. Yeah, hundred percent true. Peaky Blinders set is haunted by the ghost of a dead dog, shot by its owner. Cillian Murphy, Helen McElroy. Paul Anderson and others recently started filming a new season of the hit BBC drama at Arley Hall in Cheshire. But it turns out the 19th century mansion is haunted by a ghostly dog. And a crew have reported hearing barking noises in the hall. We've actually taken photographs of ghost dogs, haven't we? Do you remember we was in Edinburgh Manor in Iowa and a ghost walked through the laundry room? Mm. And we took a photograph of it walking along as a blue shape with a little tail. Scott Aww. petted it. Yeah. yeah. We actually have those photographs. That was taken with an IR camera, wasn't it? Thermal imaging. That Thermal. was a flur mm -hmm. we used for that. Legend has it the building's aristocratic former owner was killed by his pet pooch when the hound mistook him for an intruder. The dog was then shot dead by the gamekeeper. Owner and Mutt were buried next to each other, and the story goes that the dog will attack any bearded man. Problematic for me, I would suggest. <laughs> or anyone wearing an outfit that resembles a gamekeeper's clothing. Do we have gamekeeper's clothing? Plus fours, tweed? I have no idea what that involves. A set source said there's a certain irony that made a couple of people smile that these gangsters who brandish guns and kill people could be spooked by a little dog. <laughs> a few of the crew think that they've heard some howling from the corridors. It's especially creepy as a few of the shoots are actually at night. The set is where Cillian's character Tommy Shelby lives. Cillian has had to be channeling Tommy even more so as not to show he's a scaredy cat. There you go. Don't go there with a beard or that's just weird. You decide for yourself. <laughs> weird. Go to our Facebook site. More questions and answers with Adrian Lee. Miss Morris, you can have the last story of the evening. What do you have for me in the round of anything you want? Dealer's choice. Strange and bizarre. UFOs and cryptozoology. Green men and hairy beasties. You have a world of paranormal things oh, to choose right. from. Don't make it quick. Ooh. You don't have to make it quick. We've still got five minutes. Oh, Ooh. well... I'm going to get you ready for Valentine's Day. Got to prep it. A so that primer. means I'm going to have a shave, maybe a mm. splash of cologne, clean underwear. Well, I just need you to know that they're doing it again. While many wildlife centers plan interesting offers to attract potential donators and funders, funders, one such wildlife center located in Virginia went the extra mile to bring in donations this year. So get your pocketbooks open we are going to have a valentine's day special show next week yes so we're going to wear red and we'll have some chocolate so mm. i think we've got a few parcels and packages yes we do have been promised so thank you to all of those people so join us next week if you're having a valentine's day on a saturday night come and find us i can't promise love and romance but we can be informative and sure maybe you can leave with more than you arrive with nice well enjoy your valentine's day this year for a two dollar donation you can name a mealworm, beetle, superworm, or waxworm after an X. I'm going to name we... a waxworm after you. Oh. Great. Heather the waxworm. Excellent. Yeah. I bet you it'll be cute. I've got worms. Uh. Well, I thought I had worms. My mother was flushing dental floss down the toilet when I was a kid. I was oh. petrified for a week, honest. I looked down and thought, wow, I've got worms. Dental floss can happen. What we're going to do is we're going to name your worm after your ex, and then we are going to take a video of it and feed it to some other aminal. Oh. 
and you can watch it being eaten. Yay! That's I nastiness. Love it. It's not terrible. I, I want it. a night crawler. <gasps> I want an oh. earthworm circus. <laughs> Well, actually, my mum destroyed my earthworm circus by vacuuming under the bed when I was a kid. I was very distressed. Oh, for the truly terrible X, this is where you have to pay the five dollars, and then you name a hornworm or a nightcrawler after your ex and watch a horned a or horn slimy worm. devil be devoured by you can something else. Get the slippery wetness of the worm on your fingers there, Michelle. Just about. There you go. You've got yourself a friend. I do. Your worthless ex can finally do something nice. <laughs> wow. Their namesake helping us to feed animals in our care. The donators shall have to submit the names latest by midnight on the 13th of February and finally oh. enjoy the live stream on the day of love watching your ex get devoured. Help keep this fun and lighthearted. No politically <laughs> lighthearted light devouring of insects by other insects named after your ex. That's right. How much right. fun can one have on Valentine's Day? Yeah. No politically affiliated names, and your ex's entire legal name will not be read. So just call him or her what you my ex has changed call. her name four times so the fbi can't get hold of her that's very true that's very true i'm not Pick making this up, up. Yeah, buy all four <laughs> this buy is all not four. Bunk. <laughs> otherwise just get created and have fun and let that little slimy bastard get eaten wow <gasps> controversial yeah Hornworm love or heavens above. <laughs> you decide, go to our Facebook site, more questions and answers with Adrian Lee. Will all good things come to an end? So let us look at tonight's scores in last place with the K2 meter and the dead batteries myself. Unfortunately, I never got off the lowly, rather disappointing number six. I get a haunted mirror, a hoodie, and a night with my great grandmother. So that sounds nice. Not the end of the world. In second place tonight is Miss Morris, who gets a rather symmetrical bottom heavy, but still lonely number eight. She gets a pleasure cruise in the Bahamas and an evening driving around with the group Madness. Make sure you get their autographs. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. For me, been in first place tonight, winning the 33,000 IR dollar camera is <laughs> Michelle Corey, who managed to get herself a rather resplendent, happy, an impressive number nine. She gets oh. a single apple and a weekend in a dungeon in Ireland. Okay. And if you're lucky, we'll give you a bag of horned worms to take home with nice. you. Nice. All the fun of the fair. Do not fear, listener. Remember, we are back with a whole new bunch of stories next week at the same time. And I would love for you to join me for a fun and informative journey through the world of the paranormal, strange, intriguing, bizarre and weird. Please tell your friends and family about the show and feel free to contact me anytime via our Facebook site. More questions and answers with Adrian Lee. And there's many more stories we never got a chance to read out and they're all on there for you as well. You can also join my Twitter account at Adrian underscore Lee underscore tips. I very rarely mention that, but I have 85,000 followers on there at the moment. You've been watching more questions and answers. The only paranormal news quiz show anywhere in the world with adrian lee we are the very best in paranormal news radio entertainment the very light before the darkness my gratitude and greatest thanks are extended to lorna hunter heather morris jeton drainer and michelle corey and all at the international paranormal society in paranormal.net and the show sponsors including the lakes area paranormal interest group it just remains for me to say thank you for listening and remember be interested and interesting good night Good night.